hey, uh, are you looking for a beginner bass amp? Because you're totally in the right place. We made a list of every single bass amp we could find under $300. We whittled that list down using the powers of our mind. We ended up with these five amps from Acoustic, Eden, Ampeg, Hartkey, and Fender, all the big names in amps. And we're gonna tell you which one blew the competition to smithereens. If you're not watching this on BassBuzz.com, I recommend you go over there because there's a ton of info in the article that is not in this video, including that I recorded some bass riffs direct with my PV Cirrus and then reamped those riffs through all these amps so you can hear the differences off the same performance. There's also much more detailed review information there, so check that out if you want to know all the facts. The first amp we're looking at is the Acoustic B15. I picked this amp because it's the only amp I could find in this really, really low end of the price range that had a 10 inch speaker, okay? Those eight inch speakers are bad news. They're wimpy, they do not reproduce bass. Unfortunately, even though we've got the 10 inch speaker, this 15 watt head really did not drive a nice low end feeling in the room. It's hard to hear through the microphone and with the tone samples, but um, just the feeling of being in the room with the amp, it's pretty uh, thin. Um, but the, the tone is fine, it's just the actual low frequencies hitting you. Um, it doesn't quite, it doesn't have the feeling of a, of a bigger amp. But I like the sounds that come out of it. You've got some nice uh, vintage-y stuff if you roll the low up and the mid and highs down. If you do the opposite of that, bring the mids and highs up, you can get some really clicky, aggressive sounds. Built-in overdrive actually sounds pretty cool. This um, shape knob gives you a nice contour for slap. So I think it's a really well designed and made amp. It's just that with 15 watts, you can't get a lot of bass in the room. Next up is the Eden EC10 combo. It's got another 10 inch speaker and uh, I've played some really great Eden amps in the past. So I was curious to check this out. And unfortunately I was really disappointed by the sound. I just found it to be really uh, thin. I couldn't get a lot of bass out of this amp, really not much more than the acoustic, which is a lot cheaper. Um, even when I crank the, uh, so here's the neutral tone of the amp. If I crank the bass knob, I don't know if that's coming through the microphone, but the speaker starts to fart out if you bring the bass EQ up. So really the amount of bass you get out of the amp flat is the amount you're getting unless you want a bunch of distortion. So I was really bummed out by this. I do not recommend it. Next up is the Ampeg BA110. I really wanted to like this amp. Ampeg has made some legendary bass rigs over the years. This is not one of them. Uh, I was not super impressed with this amp. It has a nice natural tone to it. I like the sound I get just with a flat EQ. Worked nice for slap too. Um, but I was just wanting more presence and body out of this amp than I was getting for the size and the weight. The enclosure felt a little cheap to me compared to all the other ones, uh, which are really solid. The scrambler distortion, I did not like. Um, so I did not give this one a great score based on all that stuff. <laughs> Now we're looking at the Hartkey HD75. I went a little bit over our price range on this one to see if we would get more amp for our buck if we spent a little bit more. And the short verdict is we did not. This amp was such a bummer. I Again, I really wanted to like it. Some of my favorite bass players use Hartkey. And um, it looks like it's gonna be a great amp. I like the logo, um, the enclosure's really high quality. I love this metal grill on the speaker instead of fabric. But just the sound coming out of this amp really bummed me out. The flat EQ. I just hate the mid-range, and I find the heart key graphic EQ interface to be so confusing. I've been playing bass for half my life. 
Um, and I still just can't figure out that many bands of EQ. It's just too much for me. Um, and I shudder to think at a beginner trying to figure it out. Also, this amp has the most intense ambient hum I've ever heard out of an amp, especially this size. It's so loud, even with nothing plugged into it. Um, I would find it so annoying to use as a practice amp. And also, it weighs 52 pounds! My whole uh, 210 cabinet plus head that I use, the, the uh, TC electronic rig I use on the road, weighs about that much. And this does not put out enough sound to justify the weight. So, this is a clear don't buy for me. And now we arrive at the Fender Rumble 40, which is the final amp we're looking at today. And I'm really happy to report that after a few disappointing amps, this one really blew me away. I wasn't actually expecting that much. Um, it's not exactly to my taste look-wise, and I haven't always liked Fender amps in the past, but this thing just totally knocked my socks off for the money and the tones you can get out of it and stuff. It's just a really clear winner if you're looking for a good, solid beginner amp that you can not only practice with, but actually take to a rehearsal and maybe even a low volume gig. Um, this thing is amazing. I, I can't imagine a better amp in this price range. So let's take a closer look at it. Here's what it sounds like. I've got all the EQ flat right now um, and the gain down. <laughs> So already, just with a flat EQ, I, I like the tone. It's not too much of anything. It's just a, just a good solid tone. So one of the interesting things about this amp, there's a, quite a few interesting things about it. Uh, one of them is these three uh, little buttons, um, bright, contour, and vintage, which are just kind of built-in EQ uh, shifts so that you don't have to think too much about how do I get a vintage tone, you just push the vintage button. I was expecting these to be kind of gimmicky and not really like them. I tend to be resistant to features like that on amplifiers. But for what this is, essentially a practice amp, I actually thought they were really cool. So here's the flat sound. And here's the vintage button. which you could enhance even more by rolling the uh, treble down and maybe take down the high mids too. So turning this pretty modern active bass into that, um, pretty good feat for an amp this cheap. Also, I'm remembering as I'm turning these knobs, the uh, all the EQ knobs have a center detent, or however you pronounce that, deton, uh, <laughs> which is really nice. It's easy to find the middle of the EQ knob without um, having to look too closely. Uh, also, the uh, contour sounds really nice for slap. That's the flat tone, and here's the contour engage. So if you want that modern scoop slap sound, you've got it with the push of a button. And then we've got the bright knob. Um, here's the flat tone. And here's with the bright knob. So it's not too horrible, but it just gives you some of that trebly brightness um, that you might want for kind of a, an aggressive sound. Another cool thing on this amp is the built-in drive, uh, which is the distortion, actually sounds pretty cool. Here's the flat tone. And here's the drive with the, with the uh, drive gain all the way up. So the, uh, the one on the acoustic amp sounded a little bit more like a fuzz to me, like it reminded me of Larry Graham a little bit. This one's a little bit more distortion-y, um, but I actually really like it, and it sounds nice with the bright button engaged too, so you, it cuts a little bit more, um, doesn't get too distorted.
So it, it's pretty fun. I, I normally, like I said earlier, uh, not a huge fan of on-amp distortion. I, I don't think it's a necessary feature for bass, actual bass playing like 90, 90, 90, 90, 90% of the time. Uh, but I like the one that's built into this and it is fun. And if you're a beginner, this is your first amp and you want to explore some different sounds and you haven't bought any effects pedals yet, it's pretty cool. I'm also uh, really loving that this has a four band EQ. Sometimes when you only have bass, mid, and treble, the mid doesn't do what you want it to do, but having low, mid, and high, mid is really nice so you can dial up the low, mid punchiness or dial up the high, mid crispy finger clacky noise or dial those down as you see fit. For me, it's really nice to have a high, mid knob just so I can cut those a little bit usually because I'm not a fan of those high mids personally for most of the stuff I do. Construction-wise, um, this amp is great. The enclosure is really solid. I don't love the fabric speaker grill. I feel like that's going to get busted in like a few months probably. I, I think a metal speaker grill is a lot more professional. It would also last a lot longer. But big, big bonus on the construction note for this amp. This thing weighs 18 pounds. It's, it's lighter than that tiny acoustic amp we started with. It's so light. Every time I pick it up, I'm super surprised. You know, you could bicep curl this amp. It's so light. Um, I mean, some people could bicep curl the hard key, but the average person could bicep curl this amp. It's, it's just really great. It's the kind of amp you could carry in one hand to a rehearsal, bass on your back, music stand in the other hand, and you wouldn't feel uh, too out of breath when you get to where you're going. So overall, I'm super enthusiastic and impressed by this amp. I totally recommend it for anybody looking to buy their first bass amp or just get a better practice amp. If you've got one of these really awful little 10 or 15 watt, six or eight inch speaker things that came with a bass package or something, just those things just suck. They don't sound like bass. This actually sounds like bass. And what's the point of playing bass if it doesn't sound like bass? So definitely recommend it. Go out and get a Fender Rumble 40. Um, just head and shoulders above all the other amps we looked at, price-wise, weight-wise, sound-wise, feature-wise, um, construction-wise. It's just, yeah, super awesome. Love it. So, the king has been crowned. The Fender Rumble 40 kicked butt on the competition. Highly recommended as a practice amp. If you're also in the market for a bass, make sure you head over to BassBuzz.com. We've done some great beginner bass reviews over there, too, so you can get some recommendations for that as well.